given your present countenance, one presumes you are missing some old friends again. One cannot help but be reminded of them. Pray speak. Unburden yourself of these sentiments. One simply wishes Monogius were alive to witness such peace alongside us. He was so skilled in matters of craftsmanship. Kite-making would scarcely prove to be a test of his capabilities. Were he yet amongst the living, he could have opened a kite stall. One is certain it would have been an establishment rich not only in profit, but also esteem. And if, as in the past, he were unable to involve himself in matters of the mortal realm, we could sell the kites in his stead. When we finished, we could bring him back wine and partake in drink and good company. Mooncarver, those are now but fond moments in our memories. Indeed. The dead are gone, so as the representatives of the living. Let us take in the sights for a bit longer, if just for his sake. sure I'll be able to sleep tonight. Oh, that? Yeah, interesting story. It was invented by a guy from Fontaine. His name is Eildison. He's always tinkering away at some mechanism or another. He's even asked the Steambird to write about his inventions on more than one occasion. I believe I have a direct quote from him about this particular one. It, ah, yes, here it is. The device is powered entirely by mechanical components without the need for any additional energy source. Basically, it's a manually operated cranking device. How high it can fly entirely depends on how much force you can exert. Combining this invention with a kite. What a great idea, right? Oh, my conversation with Mr. Ip went really well. I've already sent the first draft of my article back to the Steambird. It's a piece that contains all the pertinent information while also telling a story. I'm quite proud of it. Oh, that reminds me. I should thank everyone who made this possible for me. Especially that spirited lady with those peculiar turns of phrase. Miss Xianyun was her name, right? It was all thanks to your connections and creativity. I would have never thought I'd be able to bring such a special gift back to Fontaine with me. This was my first time experiencing a foreign holiday in person. It was so exciting! The festive atmosphere, the contagious holiday spirit, the profound, storied cultural traditions steeped in symbolism. Oh, I almost forgot. Kuching even gave me a kite with a poem on it that she wrote herself. It goes, Dreams are like paper kites. With them do our hopes take flight. Sailing high above the clouds, they yearn for something more profound. Yet try we may and try we might, a deeper truth waits in plain sight. Though we hang our hopes and skies abound, many joys lie on the ground. I want to include this poem in my special feature on Lantern Rite. I'm sure a lot of people will love it. Yep, and happy Lantern Rite to you.
reach is so high up. Thank you for inviting me, Yao Yao. I am having a lot of fun. I'm glad. If you want, we can go fly kites some other time, too. The fun doesn't have to end today. Really? How about we do it during the day next time? That way, we can see the design better. When it flies super high up, it will look exactly like a real finch. Okay. Uh, can I take this kite to bed with me? <laughs> but of course! Yeah! Got him! I don't get it. Is something wrong, Shanha? Tell me. Perhaps I can help. The color black doesn't get dirty easily. So I thought this outfit would be acceptable to wear to work. But Xiangling told me it was inappropriate. But inappropriate? How? She probably just meant the outfit isn't suitable for that particular environment and occasion. But for a festival gathering with friends, a nighttime stroll, or an important banquet, your outfit is more than appropriate, Shenha. So you're saying it's only something I should wear in front of important people? Huh. I suppose that's another way to think of it. One may have won the kite flying competition, Yu Hung, but this prize should truly be reserved for another. You need not be so humble, honored Adeptus. Among all the kites, yours was quite literally a cut above the rest. Please accept this prize. You just besides, I'm quite certain we owe a fair share of the success of this year's lantern rite to you. <laughs> If you insist, then one can hardly continue to refuse. However, there is another matter with which one would ask your assistance. Of course. Hmm. One would be much obliged if you could distribute this case of Sunglow tea among the Millilith on duty. The security of the festivities rests entirely on their shoulders, after all. One presumes they could always benefit from something to invigorate their spirits. Cloud Retainer is so thoughtful and attentive to others' needs. I would expect nothing less of an esteemed adeptus such as herself. Understood. I'll get on that right away. <sighs> A fortuitous result indeed. One's tea surplus has hitherto resolved itself. Still a big fan of winter melon cake, then? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I guess you heard everything Paimon was saying, huh? <laughs> <laughs> of course. She was talking about you. As your father, how could I not listen? Remember back when you were a kid, and you would sit on my shoulders to watch the Wuxiu dance? Oh. On our way back home, you would beg me to buy you some winter melon cake. 
we would only buy two at a time. But before long, we tried the winter melon cake from every vendor that street had to offer. There was also that one time you used your pocket money to treat me. Do you still remember? Yeah, I remember. That was the best winter melon cake I ever had. Let's go back sometime. The shop's still there, and I remember the way. My treat, just like before. Are you sure? Absolutely. Traveler. Being in the city isn't the only way for me to appreciate the lights and beauty of Lantern Rite. Look, Liyue Harbor lies just beyond this mountain. As long as I stand at this vantage point, I may freely behold the sights of all the kites slowly ascending into the sky. For me, that is enough. I invited you here because there is something I would like to do. I want to release a Shell Lantern, and I'd like you to be there for it. Yes. I apologize for its crude appearance. I have little skill in that regard. You are very kind, as usual. All right. It's time. <sighs> Traveler. Thank you. <laughs> 